The NBA playoffs are finally here. Des Bryant is on the outs with the Dallas Cowboys. Who will be the Knicks' new head coach? The Marlins were in town, but where is Derek Jeter? The Brooklyn Nets closed the deal, and Sister Jean is still in demand. All that and more on What's the 401 Sports, coming right up. Welcome to this week's edition of What's the 401 Sports. I'm Keisha Wilson. I'm Mike McDonald. I hope you are doing well, Mike. And I hope all our friends are doing well. If you have allergies like I do, this weekend was a little rough. So go stock up on your medicine because it's, we're in for a rough allergy season. But enough about that. Let's talk about some fun stuff. The NBA playoffs are here, Mike. We are in the midst of playoffs of round one action. Let's just talk about what we've seen so far. And let's make any predictions if we have some. Yeah, nothing may really, really surprising thus far in the playoffs, Keisha. The Houston Rockets, who are favored in the West, along with the Golden State Warriors, both of those two teams, uh, the Warriors have come out of the gates against the San Antonio Spurs with a nice commanding 2-0 lead, and of course the Rockets as well. I think that there's really no other teams that are going to go ahead and compete against them in the West. The OKC Thunder had a nice win. To me, though, it's in the East, where the biggest storyline right now in this first round of the of the playoffs is with LeBron James and the Cleveland Cavaliers. They looked so flat in game one against the Indiana Pacers where what really hurt them, they got off to a horrible, horrible start in the first quarter and were playing from behind throughout the whole game. This is a big deal right now because in a seven-game series, you've fallen down one zip. Uh, the first time LeBron James, I think, has lost the first Round, first game of a first round series and he's never lost a first round before in his career so this is going to get very interesting these Pacers are not going to back down one of the reasons why the Cavaliers are where they're in right now is that they ne didn't necessarily play that well over the course of the last several weeks leading up to the playoffs where they let some other teams kind of get ahead of them who really had no business being where they were so it's going to get interesting Keisha, to see how this series plays out right now the most intriguing series is that 4-5 series between the Cavs and the Pacers. Yeah, I, you hit the nail on the head. I think the Cavs were in more trouble than I originally thought. And the Indiana Pacers, they beat Cleveland three games out of four during the regular season. So they do not have any type of fear when it comes to facing LeBron James and the Cavaliers. And the defense, the lack of defense that the Cavaliers displayed in game one is very very troubling and I don't know what's going to happen and you know we were talking about the moves in the mid-season that the Cavaliers made and thought that maybe this was what's going to help turn the corner and now it's kind of looking like mm, I don't know the formula seems to be you have to have at least two superstars and maybe a 1A or three 1As and LeBron is the A the five-star athlete, superstar. And then, you know, now it's up to what's Kevin Love going to do? What's he going to be through the, through the series? In order for the Cavs to really progress in the playoffs, make it out of this round and progress in the playoffs, he needs to really elevate about two, three steps up. J.R. Smith, you know, it's going to take a real collective effort. And you mentioned, um, so that leads me to Philadelphia 76ers. Game one, they looked like a well-oiled machine and against the Miami Heat without Joel Embiid. Game two, they had a tough loss. Um, they did fight from behind. Um, J.J. Redick was a sharpshooter in uh, game one, just burning down the nets. Game two, he struggled a little bit, but Dario Saric, you know, had a really nice game. So I think that the Philly series is going to be fun, and it's going to be fun to watch them progress um, as they move through the playoffs. And you mentioned the San Antonio Spurs. Now, San Antonio Spurs are playing without their superstar Kawhi Leonard. Mike, just a quick question I throw it out to you. What do you think the future is for Kawhi Leonard? You know, it's, it's, it's really mixed. I mean, at this point, the Spurs are focused on these playoffs. I think in the long run, uh, Gun to the head decision. I think he will wind up leaving. I know that San Antonio is going to do everything that they can do to make this right, but I just feel that they're just so they they're so turned off by the way that this has all played out. I could see him wind up leaving in the off season. Yeah, I think it's going to be interesting. This, the Spurs still have the the rights to him, so if they want to sever this relationship, because it seems to have gone sour over the course of this season, that they should make sure that they get a haul for him, that you do not let Kawhi Leonard go without receiving anything. And he's definitely worth um, some draft picks, some quality stars. I mean, I was listening to talk radio. Um, I don't know if it was talk radio or one of the, the TV talk shows, and somebody 
suggested a trade between San Antonio and Boston. And but would Boston be able be willing to give up a Jalen Brown and a Jason Tatum who are two of their young stars who are really, really putting on a show for their first uh playoffs. Absolutely. Um and I think, you know, speaking of Boston, they're doing this without Kyrie. Uh, I don't think they'll make it to the finals without Kyrie, but I mean they're putting on a really great showing, and I think Brad Stevens should really be considered for Coach of the Year. I know there's a tendency to give these awards to the best player on the team, the the coach of the best team in the NBA, but I think you should, you know, just it's not always the sexy pick that really I think is the one that should be made. Absolutely. You know, Brad Stevens has got this team, this young team, focused and ready to play for the playoffs. So. It's going to be really interesting and really great and exciting to watch. Well, Keisha, we move on to the NFL, and the Dallas Cowboys have now released Des Bryant. And Bryant, of course, took to social media to express his frustrations, but also his love for the Dallas Cowboy fans. Bryant also expressed his desire to play in the NFC East. What are your thoughts on the Des Bryant situation, and do you think he could wind up in the NFC East? Well, the writing was on the wall for Des Bryant in terms of whether or not he was going to stay with the Dallas Cowboys. His play had declined over the past few seasons, and his salary demands would not be commensurate with his with his performance on the field. You know, over the past few seasons, he hasn't he hasn't caught a thousand receiving yards since 2014. And last season, he was in the top five in the league for drop passes, all of which is not going to. Uh, make a good case for demanding money but what was interesting was that the Cowboys did not even try to negotiate for Des to take a pay cut so that really was a signal that they were ready to move on from Des Bryant now leaving them a little thin at that that position and you know the petty side of me would love to see Des Bryant in an NFC East rival uniform playing the Cowboys two times a year because that's really you know he's going to really go out and show the Cowboys what they're missing. But I don't know if it's really feasible looking at the other teams in the NFC East. The Eagles don't have enough cap space for him. The Giants already have their hands full with one troublesome wide receiver in Odell Beckham Jr. And obviously Odell Beckham Jr.'s performances far outshine Des Bryant's. And so that's why the Giants aren't just willing to just cut bait with OBJ because talent trumps everything else. You can deal with personality issues if you have a talent like Odell Beckham Jr. on your team. Washington seems to be the team that has the most cap space for Des Bryant, but it's a matter of whether or not they want to take on that salary and or the headache. So, and as far as some other viable options, I've seen the New York Jets, that name been uh, bannered around. And the Oakland Raiders. Someone also suggested the Green Bay Packers. I think Des is going to have to realize that he may not necessarily be the number one receiver. But if he can get himself on a team with a good to great quarterback, I think that's really going to make the difference for him. Yeah, I think the two best fits for him that could possibly happen if he's willing to take a substantial pay cut would be two teams that are never going to do it. And it's the Green Bay Packers and possibly... Teams that have taken this team has taken a chance on aging wide receivers in the past, the New England Patriots. It's never going to happen, though. As far as sticking in the division, the you know Des has expressed his interest in possibly playing for the New York Giants, and Brandon Marshall actually shut that down on Twitter earlier this week, saying we have enough players here. So uh, <laughs> I think another option for him would be the Houston Texans. You line him up uh, with DeAndre Hopkins, and you know you have a young um, quarterback who you can build around. Des Bryant, you look at the numbers that he's put up through the course of his career. This is a guy who had Hall of Fame talent coming into the NFL. Has he put up the numbers that people expected? Well, maybe not as great of a player as we thought he would be. But you got to keep in mind, the two quarterbacks that he's played with throughout his whole career have been an aging Tony Romo towards the end of his career when he was hurt all the time. And then, of course, Dak Prescott, who's been very good in the two seasons that he's been in the NFL. But it's not like Des Bryant ever played with a Hall of Fame guy or a top five quarterback. Back. So it's going to be it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out. My gut feeling is that Houston is going to wind up making a push for this guy after the NFL draft. Well, apparently the Honey Badger Ty, um, 
Oh, why is his first name <laughs> escaping me? Matthew is the last name. Honey Badger is the nickname. He is recently signed in Houston, Texas. He took to Twitter to try to recruit Des Bryant to come to the Houston Texans. So we'll see. We'll stay tuned. So we're going to uh, move, stay in football, but we're going to move over to Seattle. And the Seattle Seahawks invited Colin Kaepernick for a workout. But upon learning that Kaepernick was not going to definitively definitively declare that he would stand during the national anthem, the Seahawks postponed his workout. Seattle, in the meantime, did sign quarterback Stephen Morris. Mike, let's just try to talk about this and try to make some sense of what happened with Seattle and Colin Kaepernick. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, the Colin Kaepernick, it's just this, and it's a never-ending story. Uh, you know, the Seattle Seahawks have expressed interest in having this guy come in for a workout previously, and then, you know, they get him in a meeting, or prior to the meeting, they ask him what the whole situation with the anthem would be, if he were to kneel or not, and then he wouldn't give an answer to them, or he just would, you know, he just specifically said, I'm gonna, I don't remember what the specifics were, but he would not say that he would be standing for the national anthem. For me, um, you know, Colin Kaepernick, it's, it, at this point, he doesn't have a future in the NFL. I think it's pretty clear um, that he's not going to wind up getting picked up by any team. I think that this is probably the last straw. He has shown that he is willing to take a stand, no pun intended, um, <laughs> but, or, a, or a seat or a kneel. Um, but at this point, moving forward, I can't see why any team is going to want to go out and, and sign this guy uh, as a backup quarterback when it's just going to create so much hoopla, so much of a distraction. You give credit to the Seattle Seahawks for at least reaching out, but at the same time, why did this story get leaked? Why couldn't this have just been, you know, not necessarily leaked to the press? Why couldn't it have been the parties of interest, the Seahawks and Colin Kaepernick's team, why couldn't they just kept it, you know, um, in secret? But at the same time, you can sort of look at it like Colin Kaepernick He's not going to back down. This is a guy that in the past, it's not like he's saying, okay, now I'm getting paid this contract. Now I'm going to go ahead and do something that's completely different than what I had been doing in the past. So, But at this point forward, I think you know, as far as any future for Kaepernick, he's not going to wind up playing for an NFL team. Well, at least the Seahawks didn't pee on our legs and tell us it was raining. They made it clear that it was because of Ka Kaepernick not definitively saying that he was going to stand during the national anthem being the reason why they're postponing the workout. And we could just probably go ahead and say the postponement will be a never happen. It will happen uh, the 15th of February. So I think once again, it's just, you know, the NFL owners who are old, white, rich men, once again, wielding their power and really having an ease, a comfort in turning a blind eye and a deaf ear to what the root causes of the anthem, what spawned the anthem. It's much easier to just say, no, I'm not, in, instead of holding a mirror up to their faces, because I think if they give some credence to what the movement is really about, they're going to realize that they and those like them have ascended to the power and got to the positions that they did on the back, stepping over the backs of of other people and it's it's probably not a comfortable thing so the easy thing and the lazy thing is to say um he can't be in uh, on our team because he's going to affect our business because the automatic assumption was that the drop in nf4 ratings was due to the protest during the national anthem but i happen to know that there are some people who did not want to watch the ratings because of what how the nfl owners were treating kaepernick and the players when it came to this stand so i know at least three people who did it and some people and some people might know five more and then it just keeps going and keeps going so that could also be one of the main reasons why Ratings were down, but yeah. they don't want to see it that way because it's the lazy thing to do. So, I, you know, unfortunately, I don't see the NFL changing their stance. They're going to still stay behind the curveball. They're not going to be as progressive as the NBA and some of the other leagues. The NBA is the one that sticks out to me as the most progressive of the, the major leagues that we have spoken about. Um, so I just think that at this point in time, you had mentioned... Uh, 
Colin Kaepernick is, is probably his vision, his ideas, his goals are probably better served outside the NFL. He has created enough of a name for himself and enough of a name in terms of what he wants to do, what he wants to accomplish, what his concerns are, and what he likes to see change. That I think that he can partner with other um, like-minded organizations and really create some change. Right. Absolutely. And now we have some quick bites. OKC Thunder point guard Russell Westbrook ended the regular season having averaged a triple-double for the second consecutive season. In other point guard news, Golden State Warriors Steph Curry is eyeing a return to action during the second round of the playoffs, provided that his team can move past the San Antonio Spurs. NFL free agent Mark Sanchez of butt fumble fame will be missing the first four games of the 2018 regular season without pay for violating the NFL's policy on performance enhancing drugs. In our nation's capital, the Washington Wizards suspended veteran guard Jody Meeks for the playoffs for a reported drug violation. And what would a new cycle be without Sister Jean? Sister Jean's 15 minutes is kicking into overdrive. She threw out the first pitch to the Chicago Cubs, as we mentioned last time, and it has been reported that the Chicago Bulls are, have looked into having Sister Jean rep the Bulls at the 2018 NBA Draft. So Mike, we have a quick question for you. We talked about Colin Kaepernick just a short time ago, and it appears as though Adidas wants to offer an endorsement deal to him, but they have held off because he is not currently on an NFL roster. Mike, what do you think? Do you think that Adidas is, is serious about this, or what do you think about this notion? I think Adidas is trying to get people to talk about Adidas. I don't think that there's anything behind this. I mean, you're not going to go out and give uh, this lucrative contract to a guy who, let's face it, as we've talked about, is going to wind up joining a team to be a backup quarterback. Now, it does make sense where you're putting someone who's on the political forefront uh, and he's taken a stance from that from that aspect, but I just think Adidas is trying to get people, to, they're trying to get into the discussion. Yeah, I wish that Adidas didn't have that stipulation. If you want to offer him an endorsement deal, offer the endorsement deal. And, and, and and Adidas executive went on record by saying that the company is interested with, in athletes with a platform. Well, isn't that what Colin Kaepernick is? He's an athlete with a platform. So why can't he not have a relationship with Adidas? Right. Welcome back to What's the 401 Sports. Oklahoma City Thunder suspended play-by-play -play announcer Brian Davis for one game after an racially insensitive remark that he made on air during the last game of the regular season for the Thunder. Brian Davis re, um, blurted out, is he out of his cotton pick in mind, end quote, in reference to Russell Westbrook. Mike, do you think that the Thunder did the right thing by suspending Davis for a game? No. They shouldn't have sus suspended him for one game. It should have been more than that. Uh, look, this is something that's just completely sickening for this guy to go out and make this comment as an announcer for a professional basketball team. I don't think one game was enough punishment. Now, he did the right thing after he did it, or after he made these, these idiotic comments. And who did he go to? He went to Russell Westbrook. He went to the players. He apologized. Right? He went out and, and he, he, you know, he, he talked about how he made this huge mistake. But look, if this guy is making a comment like this, on a microphone in front of thousands and thousands of people, what is he saying behind closed doors? You know, and for me, for a statement like this, which is just, you know, this is just, uh, it's bigotry almost at its worst. I mean, this is just something that goes back hundreds and hundreds of years. It's so racist. It's, it's just so disgusting. I mean, as far as what the right punishment is, you know, they probably, in my eyes, they should have suspended him for the first round of the series from, instead of just, you know, you know, they should have you know, given him a, a five days or a seven day absence that he had to have away from the team. The punishment was not enough for the stupid comment that he made. Yeah. Well, this I, this one is a, a little tough for me um, because I I've had experience with this phrase before, the cotton picking. And when I was younger, I've heard it before, and I think I even said it. But when I heard it, it came from people who look like me. So at that time, I didn't know it was a bad thing. I thought it was, oh, you're doing something crazy or out of the ordinary, and that maybe also 
um, I was reading something, and sometimes some people use it as a substitute for the f bomb, but I didn't realize that it was a bad word. There was a, the the historical meaning behind it. So, you know, that's why my first instinct was like, oh, it's bad, but I don't think that he really meant it in an offensive way. And sometimes I think intent does matter. However, we're in a day and age where you really need to be more mindful of what you're saying and the meaning behind it because you know it this is it, this is offensive cotton picking is very um goes back to slavery and all the things that happened to black people during that over that course of time um so i mean i think i think one i think one game is fine uh it's a it's a tough lesson to learn um especially if he didn't mean to he didn't have uh ill will behind it. It's a tough lesson to learn, but that's where we are. Yeah. After toiling 10 years in the NBA G League, Andre Ingram's number was to, uh, was called to play for the LA Lakers against the Houston Rockets. Now, it was the second to last game of the season, and Ingram did score 19 points and had three blocks. Now, post-game, Lakers head coach Luke Walton presented Ingram with the game ball, which was probably one of the more touching moments of the night. Should the Lakers keep Ingram on its roster? And if not, Keisha, do you think he might get picked up by another team in the NBA? Oh, Mike, I love this story. I think this is a real testament to someone's character and just a real embodiment of not giving up. And really, if you have a dream, if you have a passion, you should go for it. And he's made me reconsider my life and, you know, think about the times that I probably gave up because something wasn't working too hard, working out well for me and despite my best efforts you know maybe I should have stopped and thought about maybe a different way to do it uh, but enough about me I, I mean I think I think it's a really great story and a nice lesson as far as whether or not the Lakers should pick him up I mean I think they should definitely give him a try because he gave you an example, granted it was a small sample size of what he is capable of doing, so I would like to think that the Lakers would give him an opportunity to be able to prove it on a larger scale for a longer period of time. We are in a New York state of mind with our New York sports report. Former Yankees shortstop and legend and now owner of the Florida Mar Marlins, Derek Jeter decided to skip the trip to New York City when the Marlins played the Yankees. Mike, do you think that Jeter made the right decision? Absolutely. You're not going to comply up to New York where your team is on pace to lose over 100 games at this point. I mean, the Marlins have just been dismal for the first couple of weeks of this season. You have to deal with the New York media. You're going to deal with the New York fans. You're going to deal with all that exposure. You make it about a team. Whether your team is doing well or doing poorly, you don't want to be the guy who is we're getting all of the attention. So I think at this point, Jeter did make the right decision. It's going to be a tough road ahead for him for the Marlins as they face the rest of this year. I mean, this is going to be – they're bad. They are really, really bad. Um, but, yeah, as far as coming up to New York, I can't blame Derek Jeter for not wanting to come up here. And there's still – there's definitely some bad blood uh, between Jeter and the Yankees organization despite the fact that um, – you know, he's going to be a Hall of Famer and he has got his number retired and all that. Uh, I think there's definitely some bad blood that's been simmering over the last couple of years without a doubt. Oh, stop the nonsense. Darren Jeter, get your behind on the plane and come to New York City. See, step into Yankee Stadium where he is still very much adored and loved. And I'm sure all the Yankees fans will love to see his face again. And take in a nice dinner, go to a Bobby Flay restaurant. He's one of my personal favorites. And, you know, you could just... There's ways to work around the media when it comes to answering questions about Giancarlo Stanton or anything else. A couple simple sentences and say I'm not discussing any further. Look, he has been around the game long enough to know how to work the media. Just come on up. I don't know. What do I know? <laughs> well, Keisha, we move back to the NBA. And as predicted, the New York Knickerbockers fired head coach Jeff Hornacek and assistant coach Kurt Rambis. Lots of names are being floated around. Who do you think has the best chance? I like David Fisdale. I think that he might be a really great addition to New York. He has the experience in terms of player development. I think um, from what I understand, he really got the best out of Marc Gasol when he was um, in Memphis. And definitely he has a Kristaps Porzingis who, who's 
really on the uprising if you can even get him to be even better that's a positive for the team and I think that he has the right kind of attitude he he strikes me as being tough but relatable to players I don't know I just kind of like his his aura his style uh, I think Mark Jackson I I've mentioned that before on one of our other shows that I think Mark Jackson would be a nice fit and I'm hearing Jerry Stackhouse's name being bantered about as a possibility for the New York niche job and um, if he doesn't get this job that you know he should definitely be in consideration for any future head coaching jobs I agree with you. I think Fisdale would wind up being the best fit. I don't think that Mark Jackson, as opposed to, I, you know, Mark Jackson did a very good job with the Warriors. I know they pushed him out, and he had there was some uh, there was some tension there towards the end. And I do respect the fact that the Knicks are going out of their way to think outside the box a little bit with Jerry Stackhouse, who hasn't necessarily coached, but the guy has been a you know around the NBA for a very very long time. Uh, but Fisdale, I mean, this is a guy, longtime Heat assistant coach. What I've heard about him is that not only is he a very good X's and O's basketball coach, but one thing that he's very good at is recruiting people similar to like that of a ba- ba- college basketball coach to say, hey, come, you know, come join us here in Miami or come here, join us here in Memphis. He's very good at that. He's got good people skills. He's sort of uh, left on bad terms with the Memphis Grizzlies, but at the same time, I think he did a pretty good job there. And I think that you want a guy with some experience, and sometimes that second, t- you know, that second chance that you get is where you're able to turn things around. And I think he'll definitely be able to handle the New York media and give us some great sound bites. Yeah. <laughs> and now we'll talk about our Brooklyn Nets. Brooklyn Nets owner Mikhail Prokhorov completed the sale of a 49% interest in the Brooklyn Nets to Joe Tsai. Mr. Tsai is executive vice chairman and co-founder of Alibaba Group, a global internet company with business in e-commerce, cloud computing, and digital entertainment. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Traditional light bulbs actually generate nine times more heat than light. Switch to energy saving bulbs. Saving energy saves you money. And now let's go off topic. Cleveland Cavaliers power forward center Tristan Thompson was caught cheating on Khloe Kardashian who recently gave birth to a baby girl. She gave birth on April 8th, and she named the daughter True Thompson, and Twitter rejoiced. Google all the shade that has been thrown (laughs) since the naming of this baby. However, according to reports, the entire Kardashian-Jenner clan was outraged by Tristan Thompson's philandering. So much so that Kanye West wanted to put his hands on Tristan. That means he wanted to give him a good old-fashioned beat down. Well, Mike hate to end on such a juicy note but we have to go but don't worry you can keep up with us until we meet again next time by following us on instagram and twitter liking us on facebook and subscribing to our youtube channel all at 401 sports tv also be sure to download our podcast on apple podcast stitcher and tune in i'm keisha wilson and on behalf of mike mcdonald we'd like to thank you for joining us at what's the 401 sports and we look forward to checking you out again